Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add resin to a hollowed out statue or 3D print figure, whatever your project is, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you how to add resin to a hollowed out part in order to make it solid. In this project, we'll be working on this one fourth quarter scale statue. This is a Star Wars piece and this is Darth Raven. She's a custom resin statue. So now if you follow my channel, you might have seen my previous video on how to add weight to a hollow statue using resin and plaster. Well, in that video, it was a little bit different because I was able to use a funnel. We were working on a larger part. I was working on a base, so I was able to drill a large enough hole to where I could add a funnel and then pour in the resin. But what if you weren't able to do that? What if you had something smaller? What if you had an arm or a portrait, a smaller part to where you didn't want to make a large hole for a funnel? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. We're going to discreetly drill a hole and inject resin using a blunt tip needle as well as a syringe. So now there's a few reasons why you might want to make a hollowed statue uh, more solid. Maybe you want to add more weight uh, to a certain part. Or maybe you have an area of the statue to where the walls are too thin and you want to thicken them up. Or in my case, I have this statue here. Again, it's the Star Wars Darth Raven and it has a hairline crack running through the leg. So if you take a close look at where her leg is bent, you're going to notice a hairline crack and I'm slowly bending it back and forth as I need to do this easy as I don't want it to break anymore. But I also want to show you that there is a visible crack and it's at the point to where it's very close to where the entire leg just might just snap off. But at the same time, it's holding on tight to where when I push it back together, you can't even notice it's broken. So how do I fix this? I don't want to fully break the leg. That's just going to make the repair more difficult. But I do want to seal this up so that it doesn't further break anymore. And I can barely pull it apart enough to where I feel comfortable trying to add some glue in there. And hopefully that the glue would hold it together. So I'm not going to try to add glue because I just I don't think I can pull it open enough to where I can add glue and then close it back together. So that's not an option. Being that we can't fix it from the outside, we can, however, fix it from the inside. And that's when today's tutorial comes into place. We're going to inject resin onto the inside and we're going to make the leg fully solid. That way it seals up internally and it will seal the entire statue solid and we don't have to worry about any future breaks. Now, normally when something breaks, I would go to my glue and glue it back together. But in this case, it's a hairline crack and I can't pull the two parts open enough to even get glue in between the two parts to where I feel secure enough that it would even hold together if I did try to get glue in there. The resin will fully seal everything from the inside. The outside closes up very nice and tight so there's no visible lines and everything will be fully solid and we won't have to worry about this breaking again in the future. So before I go pouring liquid resin into the leg, I do need to take the precaution that some of that liquid might come dripping out through the crack. Even though it's a hairline crack, there's always the chance that something could slip through. So I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy welding glue. This is JB Weld. It's the same stuff I use in all of my repair videos. And I'm going to slightly seal the crack from the outside before we go injecting resin onto the inside. It's a two part epoxy, so I'm just taking equal halves from each tube. You mix them together, stir it, and I'm just lightly dabbing it onto the outside of the hairline crack as uh, uh, not to cover up any of the textures, but I just want to slightly seal it from anything leaking through. The next step or, you know, the next issue is to try to figure out where I could discreetly make a hole. This way I can inject resin using a needle. 
So I want it to be above the hairline crack, uh, somewhere towards the top of her leg. This way I can drop the resin in and I have the perfect spot. There's a bunch of rivets on the outside of her armor. So if I drill into one of the rivets, it would be very easy to repair it afterwards. So I'm going to be choosing the very top rivet on the left side and that's going to be our entry point uh, for adding the resin. And for that we'll be using the Dremel and I'm just drilling a small enough hole uh, that will allow me to stick a needle tip through and push the resin inside. So here's a look at the hole we drilled and I'm just taking a piece of metal uh, wire and poking it through into the leg. I just want to double check that the leg is hollow. I want to make sure everything is clear and out of the way on the inside before I go pushing liquid resin onto the inside of the leg. And everything feels good. Everything feels nice and hollow on the inside. So we can move on to the next step of uh, getting the syringe and needle ready for the resin. Okay, so this is basically a 30 millimeter uh, syringe and then I'm using a blunt tip needle. I believe it's a 16 to so maybe an 18 gauge uh, needle tip. You want to make sure you have a large enough needle to where you're able to push resin through. Uh, resin is a little bit on the thick side, so you definitely want something thick enough that it'll allow the liquid to flow through the needle tip. But at the same time, you want to use something small enough that you don't want to create a big enough hole when you have to drill into the part. I'm using a two-part casting resin. So you basically want to use something that's going to dry very quickly. This specific resin uh, has a working time of two and a half minutes and then it fully cures in 10 to 15 minutes. For this project, we need to swoosh it around on the inside. So you want something that is fast drying. This way it dries up right away. It's a one to one mix ratio. So you're basically mixing equal halves from each container. And the plan here is to actually mix it inside of her leg and swoosh it around uh, because it does cure so quickly. I don't wanna mix it ahead of time and then try to inject it afterwards. So first I'm going to inject part A, which is the clear looking one. And then afterwards I'll be injecting part B, which uh, is the one that has more of a brownish tint to it. And then we'll be swooshing it around in her leg and hopefully everything cures nice and solid.
Okay, and everything was injected fine into her leg. I'm swooshing it around to mix it up so this way it cures, but we ran into an issue. I'm noticing it's dripping from the bottom. So now, in the previous step, I did try to seal the outside with the epoxy glue, but I did put it on very lightly, and this is the same reason why I didn't want to just try to fix this statue with just glue by itself, because the crack was so thin that I could barely get the glue in there. So it is leaking a little bit from a spot that I probably missed. So we're now going to plan B. Okay, so and here is plan B. I basically have her set up now like she's about to go in for surgery, uh, which is probably what I should have done in the first place is make sure she was well protected. So I have her fully covered with uh, plastic and then I have the opening masked off with tape. This way I still have access to the entry hole. So this time around, we're going to inject the resin a little bit differently. I'm going to have to work even faster now. I'm actually going to mix the resin ahead of time. I'm mixing part A and part B together first and then injecting it into the leg. So I did two to three rounds of syringes of 30 millimeters. Uh, I got it about right up to above where the hairline crack was, but obviously we don't want to go too high as it will come spilling back out of the entry hole. So everything went great and now we can start to get her patched back up and take a look at the final results. Being that I cannot show you the inside of her leg and what happened on the inside, I will show you in a test container of what the resin looks like when it cures. So again, this is polyurethane resin, uh, better known as PU resin. It is extremely strong. It's basically what they use these days to uh, manufacture entire statues. Uh, I actually get asked this question all of the time, uh, which is better, resin or polystone? So basically polystone and resin, polyurethane resin is pretty much the same thing. Uh, polystone is just polyurethane resin and then they add stone dust to it or it's actually called calcium powder. So picture what I was just using, this polyurethane resin, PU resin but then they add an additional calcium powder to the mixture to make it a little bit more stronger and give it a little bit of a different consistency. So now, which do I prefer? Well, the polyurethane resin, PU resin, is extremely strong. As you can see, I'm doing test, hitting it, scratching it, it doesn't break. I do, however, think that polystone is well, it does have slight advantages. I do like that it has stone dust in it. I do feel like it gives it a little bit of an extra strength. So in that matter, I do prefer polystone, but there's nothing wrong with just straight up resin by itself. 
The strength of a statue really comes down to how it's engineered, how it's manufactured. They, you know, you need to make sure the walls are thick enough. You need to make sure the right areas have enough strength. So it really comes down to the design of the statue and when they're um, creating the thickness of everything. So if something's too thin and brittle, yes, it's obviously gonna break. But when you have something thick like this, there's nothing wrong with resin by itself. From this point out, all I really need to do is patch up that rivet hole that I originally drilled through for the entry point. So I did that off camera. I just took some Aves epoxy sculpt and uh, made a new little rivet, painted it that gunmetal color and then clear coated everything. So again, if you're here because you're working on a repair, you need to thicken up the walls of your statue or you're here from uh, the 3D printing community and you need to learn how to make parts more solid. Hopefully this video helps you. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to answer anything and please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next project. Take care. You in my sight